Right now, Fight Plus, the ultimate digital platform for live sports and entertainment, is offering a free seven-day trial at tryfight.com. Yes, you can access Fight Plus's incredible library full of combat sports, wrestling, and other premium content absolutely free for seven days by going to tryfight.com. And the best part, you can find them on all major streaming platforms available today. So don't waste another second. Go to tryfight.com. That's T-R-Y-F-I-T-E.com right now and find out why they are the undisputed champ of live sports and entertainment. in sports entertainment. Hey, this is Kurt Angle, and welcome to the Kurt Angle Show. On the show today, we'll be watching one of of my favorite tag matches of all time. But first, let me introduce to you my co-host, Paul Bromwell. How are you doing today, Paul? Kurt, I'm doing great, man. I'm really excited about this because originally this started off with us talking about TNA Slam Anniversary 2012, and then I got to give a lot of love to Derek Sabato, our guy, because he started talking with our guest, and we now have Kazarian. That's right. Frankie is here with us today. Frankie, how are you, man? I am very, very well. I'm thrilled to be here with you guys, Kurt. It's good to see you again, man. I've missed you. It's been a while, Uh, and thrilled to talk about this match and about... uh, everything that was uh, TNA Impact Wrestling in 2012. Hey, 10 years ago, you and Christopher Daniels were bad influence and the TNA World Tag Team Champions. How long ago does that feel for you? Does that seem like a long time? You know, in some instances, it seems like it was last month. Uh, (laughs) In other instances, it seems like it was a lifetime ago. Just because, you know, 10, 10, 11 years is a long time. And in pro wrestling, Think about how much the business has changed in this oh, yeah. this last eleven years, man. It's 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 really nuts when you think about it. Uh, so so yeah. So now you know, thinking back, wow, that was eleven years ago. It it really was a whole lifetime ago. But I remember that year specifically, this match, this pay per view, fondly. Yeah, man. And uh, both of you guys uh, in the past have both talked about how good AJ Styles is. But seriously, and, and I want both of you to talk about, we'll come to you as our guest here, uh, Frankie, first. Talk about just AJ. I mean, he's still getting it done. Uh, you know, just turned 46 years old, crushing it at a high level. Uh, talk about AJ a little bit. Uh, you know, I it was my opinion that AJ Styles was one of the top three best wrestlers in the world for a long time, since I first met him in 2001. Uh, the first time I met the guy, I was like, wow, there's something special about this guy. Uh, not only just being a good wrestler, uh, there's a lot of good wrestlers. There, he's a step above that. He, he's uh, adaptability. Anybody he's in the ring with, he can adapt to their style. Uh, he can make a good match great, a great match excellent. Uh, he's just, he has all the tools. He's, you know, it's it, aptly named the phenomenal one. Uh, so it's it's real, really no surprise that he's achieved uh, the level of success he has uh, for a long time, he was the best kept secret in pro wrestling because he had, <laughs> he because was, he, yeah, he had broken out of that bubble, you know, uh, the impact wrestling bubble. And once he got to showcase what he could do on that grand stage at WWE, the whole world took notice. And now I'm, I'm so proud of him and I'm so, so happy to still be one of his best friends and be involved in his life and watch his career blossom the way it has. Yeah, Kurt, uh, talk a little bit about AJ. I know we have in the past, but just what, what you've thought about how good he is and how good he was even back then. The only other person I can compare AJ to is Shawn Michaels. I mean, they both have the way they have the ability to adapt to anyone's style. Uh, they have great chemistry with everybody. And not only that, they make it easier on you because they do all the work. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> 
I mean, AJ, it's like a night off when you're wrestling them. Same with Shawn Michaels. And those two guys are just, I think they're a, a head and shoulders above everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Now, both of you guys talked in the past. Oh, sorry about that. When you're told you're going to be working with me and AJ, Cass, um, what did you feel about that prospect? Uh, thrilled. I mean, CD and I were really just kind of getting rolling as a team and, um, we'd had some high profile matches, but certainly none this, this big, uh, you know, Kurt, I had worked with you in singles matches and some six man stuff. And obviously I'd worked with AJ a ton, but to have this match on this platform, the Slammiversary pay-per-view, uh, in front of this crowd in Arlington, Texas, I think it was in Arlington. Uh, you know, I was, it was one of those kind of proving ground matches for me. Like, you know, like, uh, obviously Kurt, you've been everywhere and done everything. AJ at that time was, was TNA's guy. CD had been there for a long time, but this was a time for me to have a real high profile match, uh, and step up to the plate and deliver once again. And I felt like I did. I felt like we all did. Uh, And I I was thrilled at this prospect. Me too. Yeah, so so listen, this was uh, also the time frame when AJ and Dixie Carter storyline was going on and, and Surge is involved. Both of you, and I'd like to hear from both of you on this topic, had to think this is uh, some silly stuff or, or what's going through your head with this whole storyline? <laughs> well, I, I can speak from firsthand knowledge, being uh, right in the mix of it and knowing where. So this story, uh, it's legendary, the whole Claire Lynch thing. However, in the in the genesis of this idea, it was me, AJ, CD, and uh, Eric Bischoff and Jason Hervey working really hands on. And let let me just say, the idea we had would have been really good, but it got sideways because somebody in the office didn't like an aspect of it. So it took a a left turn, and then another left, and another left, and went off in a direction that hell, I don't even know. Uh, so yeah, it got silly, uh, but the intent and the direction that we had all intended would have been really good and dark and deep. And I think would have, would have, we'd be talking, we'd be having a whole different conversation Mm. had, had it played out. We all envisioned it, but that's wrestling, man. Well, not to ask you this, but what did you envision? So, uh, so the idea was uh, like, you know, we were trying to frame AJ for having this affair with Dixie and uh, ultimately it didn't, it ended up, it wasn't Dixie, but it was, a Carter relative and it was so did not like this idea at all. So they're kind of the ones that it. It yeah. and kiboshed it. And, uh, and it, and it just, once we took the Carter element out of it, the story, it just had no teeth, man. We had to yeah. like, we had to pivot and we had all these other ideas coming in. So it, um, yeah, it just kind of went awry, but you know, I, I, uh, to this day, I'll say that, even though, you know, what we were given was not the best. I think all of us, you know, in ring and in terms of promos and vignettes, knocked it out of the park. I, and everybody was seemed to be a team player about it, right? AJ yeah. and, you know, whatever. Even if it did go sideways, everybody stuck with it and was a team player the whole way through. Because, uh, well, you know, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, you know how it is, uh, Kurt, especially, you know, when you're involved in something. Uh, even if it's something you're doing begrudgingly or something you don't, you know, our job is to, is to, you know, make chicken salad. You yeah. know, that's what we always say. You make chicken salad and, you know, so, and our names are attached to this and we have pride in what we do. So anytime we're out there in the ring, cutting a promo backstage, we're trying to do our absolute best, man. Hmm. And, and we all worked as a team. Uh, there was no, Absolutely. there was no me and you. It was always us. That, that's what made TNA so special. I was going to say that had to be so refreshing, Kurt, for you to be down there and with that team type environment. It wasn't competition like it was in WWE. It was it was t- playing as a team. You know, we all had a job to do and we all did our jobs. And and I love that format. But you recently recently celebrated being an Impact for twenty years, Kaz. Obviously, you spent some time uh, with the WWE and AEW during the time frame. But how has Impact evolved? from when you first started in the company? You know, it's. I'm just so glad that Impact is still here 21 years later and thriving. Uh, especially, you know, I was there almost since the very beginning. And, you know, just always hearing that you guys won't be around another six months, you won't be around another year. Uh, now, 21 years later, in Impact Wrestling, TNA is well-established in the marketplace, uh, has a very, very rich history 
that you're a huge part of, Kurt. Uh, it, great it just, library. Yeah. yeah, a great library. Think of the names that have run through there and the guys that are still there, the guys that started there. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's gone through its ups and downs, man. And I've been a part, a lot of those ups and a lot of those downs. Uh, and right now we're in a very, very healthy place. we got a great locker room, a uh, very, very solid group of men and women out there just, you know, busting their asses week in and week out. Great management team. Uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be now a guy who can be looked at as a leader and a veteran and a guy that can help elevate this brand and this company to the next level. Because I started there as the guy that was an up and comer, just trying to get a spot. You know, now I'm, I'm cemented as a guy, as an impact guy. And I want to just do what Kurt did for this company when he got there, got our name out there, got brand awareness, had everybody kind of turn their head and look, oh, what's going on over here? And Kurt did wonders for us. So I'm trying to follow the example of that and just, cool. you know, and, and, and raise, raise everything. Speaking of the uh, the here and now and, and what you're doing with them, uh, Frankie, you recently took on fellow Killer Kowalski Trini and Eddie Edwards at Impact's recent yeah. Against All Odds. Did you ever expect when you started with the company how full circle this whole thing would be? It's it's nuts, you know. But that's uh, at its core, that's what wrestling is. Mm. It's 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 a give back type of business. It's it's you know it really is a, a full circle moment. You know, Eddie Edwards and I maybe the last two legitimate killer Kowalski guys out there throw in Tommaso Ciampa, but um, guys that were actually trained hands-on by killer Kowalski, uh, not a lot of us left. Uh, so uh, I always do my part to get killer's name out there and uh, try to remind people of his greatness and his legacy and what he did as a, as a instructor and a teacher after his career. Uh, because I, I, I don't, you know, a lot of time the, veterans and the guys that pave the path, the further back we get, the more they get forgotten a little bit, you know? Uh, so like, you know, Walter's a guy from the forties and fifties and sixties. So, you know, I want to remind the younger generation that might not know who killer Kowalski is that he was a legendary wrestler, but he trained some of the, some of the best in the business. And if you look at WWE right now, it's basically being run by a train developmental and triple H both That's Kowalski right. guys. So killer's fingerprints are all over the business, man. Mm. Well, what has been your favorite moment during your time in Impact? There's so there's so many. It's it's honestly impossible to try to pinpoint one. Uh, I mean, uh, being involved in the first ever Ultimate X match, going into that match blind completely, and seeing what that's become now uh, is very special to me. Uh, uh, you know, the first time uh, wrestling on a pay per view, wrestling you for the world title, Kurt. The day after I had. Uh, one of my best matches in Impact, which was a ladder match against Christian, and then wrestling Kurt Angle on Spike TV the next day, and, and one of my best matches still to this day. Uh, just that a match like that raised my stock so much uh, in one in one night. Uh, you know, uh, just uh, you know, there, there's so many winning the tag team titles with Chris Daniels, and and recently going back and winning the X Division title again last year. Was was you know who would have thought it? Forty four years old, I was going to be an X division champion. You know it's nuts. And then having the match against Josh Alexander, and now being back again. You know being back in this position, it's just uh, it's. Um, there's so many good moments, man. I can't pinpoint just one. And I like to say the cheesy answer of maybe my best moment hasn't happened yet, and that would be winning the world title. Mm. How cool would that be, man? That'd, yeah, be, man? that'd be awesome. So I'm going to go on the flip side of what Kurt asked. What uh, do you feel, Frankie, was the lowest moment of, of your run and impact? Oh, boy. Anytime I had to do a job, <laughs> <laughs> which was a lot. No, I'm kidding. Uh, uh, so it's probably no secret at this point that I had to portray the suicide character. And um, uh, this was was I was tasked with this in the middle of 2008. Again, coming off a great fall, having matches with Christian and Kurt and Booker T and Bobby Roode and, and really kind of finding my feet as a guy that could be in the heavyweight division, not just an X division wrestler. Cause I'm certainly not just an X division wrestler. I'm, I'm not an X division wrestler at all. I just, I kind of got grouped in with a bunch of guys that were, uh, and I really thought I was like, you know, I, I, I was from an in-ring perspective. I was, I was really finding my feet. Uh, and all of a sudden they just presented me with this character and I could not get a straight answer. Why? When I talked to Dixie, when I talked to Jeff, when I talked to Vince Russo, when I talked to everybody, 
it was just we need somebody we can trust in this in this role and and I I fought it and I fought it and I fought it and I fought it and they were having none of it so they put me on this mask and they put me in this bodysuit and just kind of cut my legs off and for the next year and a half, I got injured I tore my bicep and my tricep while I was doing that character and just stopped any momentum I had and really you know that was probably the darkest I've ever been darkest place I've ever gone to professionally where it was you know Kurt, I don't know if you've had days like this. I mean, you're such, you love the business. I know as much as I do, but when you just go to work and it's like, why am I still doing this, man? Like, it's just like, I'm just, I'm just, it's just draining. I'm, it's not fun anymore. It's not, I'm, it's not, you know, I'm not finding my passion. I'm not enjoying this. And thankfully that didn't last too long. Thankfully it was only, you know, about two years. And, and I want to ask you a piggyback off that. How did you fight your way out of that and, and start to find your way back, man? What was the turning point for you? Well, I mean, again, I, you know, once I, once I uh, came to the realization that I was doing this character, I thought, okay, man, let's take it as a challenge. I tried to change the way I hit the ropes. I tried to change my move set completely. I wanted this character to be something different than Frankie Kazarian. Uh, and I started pitching ideas about the character, which again, fell on deaf ears at the time. Management was different and a little bit difficult. Gotcha. Uh, and you know, Ultimately, one day I got a call for an email from Terry Taylor and said, uh, please bring your Frankie Kazarian gear to TV. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> and you thank God. And they kind of just threw me back in the mix. You know, there was no prompt and circumstances. They just put me in a match and and slowly but surely, you know, I was suicide and cast simultaneously for a couple of weeks and then. That was gone and passed on to the next poor schmuck that had to do it. So yes. <laughs> hey, you know what blew my mind? That they put a mask on someone as good looking as you. Ah, uh, you sweetheart. Uh, you know what? Uh, no. <laughs> you know what, Kurt? I remember I remember talking to you about this, uh, and I was real down and I was telling you what was going on. And uh just, you know, I was like, Yeah, this sucks, blah, blah, blah. And I remember at the end of the conversation, you said, Well, you're a great wrestler, man. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna figure this thing out. Don't worry about it. And that meant a lot to me coming from you. Cause I know you're not the type to just blow smoke and everything. And I was like, okay, man, that's, you know, that's encouraging to hear that. So that really, that really helped me mentally. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank 13 you. years later. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when did you know your time in AEW was coming to an end? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, that pretty early on. Um, so, I re-signed with AEW when I when I left last year. I still have two years left on my contract. When I left, I made the decision to leave. I still have two years left. I probably could have been there much longer. Um, I re-signed at the end of 2021, and hindsight being what it is, I probably shouldn't have. But again, AEW, I was there since before day one. That's right. You know, yep. I was I was there in the when this was a germ of an idea, I was there discussing this company when they didn't even have initials attached to them, you know, in, in, in these rooms with Cody and the bucks and page and sky and CD. So again, it was, I was committed. I was like, I want to try to, you know, ride this thing out. It just became apparent to me that what I like and what I appreciate about pro wrestling and the way I like it presented was not happening at AEW. And that's not an indictment at them. It just, what they perceive as good television wrestling and what I do are different things and just the business model, everything. And again, it was one of those things I want, I, I feel and still to this day feel that I have so much more to offer than what I was being utilized for at AEW. Uh, so I bet on myself and I made the decision to walk away and I am very thankful I did. Uh, it's by far the best decision I could have made where I am right now. Um, so yeah, uh, if I had to give a straight answer to that, it would probably be, uh, late 2021 when I resigned and I realized I probably should have just uh, rolled the dice then. We want to pause this episode of the Kurt Angle show to tell you about Kurt and I's new favorite app and it's game time. It's the place to go for tickets to all things, sports, comedy shows, concerts, wrestling, you name it, Game Time has it, especially those last second tickets when you're on the fence but just not sure. And I'm telling you, if you can find tickets cheaper on another site, Game Time's going to credit you 110% back. They even have event cancellation protection. So if your favorite performer decides to cancel, they have protection for you in that event. They also have a 24 hour return guarantee. 
I'm telling you, I've had some terrible experiences with all the other ticket apps out there, not with game time. They even provide job loss assurance. No one else has that. If you prove proof of job loss, they're going to refund your tickets. I don't know that it gets any more fan friendly than that. So snag the tickets now without the stress with game time. You can download the game time app, create an account and use code angle for $20 off your first purchase. That's right. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code angle for $20 off. Download it today. Last minute tickets. Remember, lowest price and it's guaranteed. So many great events. You can take advantage of it now. Whether you're a fan of the NFL, wrestling, music, it doesn't matter. As I said, Game Time has it all. You can see awesome pictures of the seats. Look at the sections, and they are so fan friendly. There's no mistake about it. Game Time is the app for you. So check it out now. Create an account. Use code Angle and twenty dollars off your first purchase. I mean, listen, you were there, like you said, it was a germ of an idea. And then fast forward right through the pandemic years where you're just doing all the matches and at Daly's place. So yeah. that was a interesting time period. Yeah. Uh, but then to see you come back on impact and the ovation and the pop that you got, uh, your wife at ringside, such yeah. a cool moment, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it was great. I mean, you can't tell the story of Frankie Kazarian without impact wrestling. I mean, a large part of my history, my catalog, uh, everything is there. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, and that's important to me, you know, it's, that's, uh, when you, when you start to get, I'm 25 years in, uh, so, you know, you start thinking about legacy stuff and what I'm going to leave behind and, you know, and what, uh, you know, what I want to do going forward. So yeah, it's, it was really cool. Uh, very happy, no ill will at every, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, I was glad I was able to walk away. Um, and just, it's the best thing, best decision I could have made. Be best situation for you. So, sure. so there you go. Yeah, man. Well, well listen, guys, we're going to fire up this epic tag team match. And uh, we're going to continue some questions with you, Frankie, in, the, in conversation. But yep. before we, uh, we, we kind of mute it, they're going to do a nice job of kind of going through the whole storyline and building up. And, and so I'm going to play the audio uh, for cool. our audience to kind of bring everybody in where we're at. So we're cool. going to go ahead and fire up and uh, check this out. Here we go. Awesome. AJ obviously was distracted. You only saw Daniels come out here along with that, that, that envelope, whatever's in it. Daniels and Kazarian trying to convince the Olympic gold medalist that they're on his side. Styles focus divided again because of Daniels and Kazarian and whatever this proof is that they have in the envelope. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Angle sneaks up. Angle rolls up, AJ. And he got the three count. What's in the envelope that Daniels and Kazarian seem to be holding over the head of AJ Styles? Did I ask for your help? Either of you ever get involved in any of my matches ever again, you're going to see a whole new side of Kurt Angle that you don't want to see. You made a mistake, AJ. And this is the proof. Isn't that you and Dixie Carter in that photograph? Things aren't always what they seem. All right, AJ, you say things aren't what they seem. Well, I'd love for you to explain this. There's affection, and then there's passion. Apparently, the truth hurts, huh, AJ? Now, we have showed you pictures. We showed you video. But you still don't believe us. Well, don't worry, baby birds. I'll feed you. We have proof positive of the sordid affair between AJ and Dixie Carter. Straight from their own mouths. Are you coming this weekend? I wouldn't miss it for the world. I can't tell you what it means to me that you're going to be here. How long do you think it will be before Serge gets there? Turn this off! Back in on the plexiglass button! Get out of my face! What in the hell just happened? Dixie, I know I do. Who did this? Don't look at me with those eyes. It's like there's face out there. Dixie, I have a family. AJ's got a family. These guys are finished. Finished. Finish. Don't ever think you can put your hands on me. I don't care who you think you are. That's that's Dixie's husband, Serge. You got to feel from all the stuff that's going on here. And his wife's right in the middle of it. It's, it's, it's very uncomfortable. The phenomenal AJ Styles and the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle take on Kazarian and Christopher Daniels for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. 
guys, I don't know, but the soap opera fan in me kind of love that a little bit. It's pretty good, man. <laughs> man, I haven't watched that in so long. I, there's so I'm many elements. To something happened. <laughs> oh yeah, no kidding. I remember hating that AJ bump for Surge. I remember fighting that. I know. Hey, you I, gotta do it, man. It's, yeah, it's her husband. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta give AJ credit for doing that. I was a team player, man. He's he's the yeah. best, you know. Boy, uh, oh man. He, and he sold it. And look at you, man. I mean, you guys. I mean, you could talk. Let's talk about Christopher Daniels first. I mean, uh, go ahead. So, uh, just I, I don't know what I could say that I already have. It's just so good. Again, you know, uh, underrated. Just a guy that can do anything. You know, he's a, a lovable heel. He's disgusting slime ball of a baby face. <laughs> just so so damn good, man. You know, you know what's crazy. He was at the Dory Funkin' Dojo my first time there. With you, yeah. I thought he was going to make it. I, I, He was the best yeah. kid there. The yeah. problem was he was he was a heat-seeking missile. Like, yeah. He was like, he was he was um, degrading uh, Dory Funk Jr., and he was just trying to be a heel. But they were taking it the wrong way, and they were like, oh, okay, oh, we're shit. not going to have this guy. I had heard. He yeah. was trying to be a heel, and they were like, nope, nope, we're not going to hire you. Yeah, I yeah, he's told me that story and it just oh, kind of yeah. derailed him, yeah. Oh man. He did okay though. Yeah. Kurt, I'll uh, I'll let you uh follow up there with uh with Frankie on on some of the stuff here as far as how we're getting into uh some of the questions. All righty. Hey, what did you think of the AJ story? He's very strict about his image and his family among other things. Am I right? Yeah, 100%. And uh, again, just a testament to him of how involved he was. Because ultimately, you know, even though we were painting AJ as this scumbag that was trying to hook up with Dixie, ultimately the end of the, the end of the story was he's the good guy, and CD and I are the are the pieces of crap. <laughs> uh, you know. So, but it was it was a testament to his. Oh boy, we're starting. Testament yeah. to his commitment. You know. Did you think that hey, this is some of our best heel work that that we've ever done? Well, hundred percent. We were, uh, at this point we were collaborating a lot with Eric Bischoff. Eric Bischoff is a huge part of why, uh, CD and I are successful and we're successful as the team. Okay. Uh, we were getting, we were getting able to talk, which people didn't realize we could do. We were getting able to like do vignettes, uh, show, show a funny side, a mean side. So we were doing, we were firing on all cylinders here, man. So, so you are a big proponent then you would say of, of Eric and what he was able to help. I speaking from personal experience only, he did nothing but great things for CD and I. Nice. Yep. Hey, did you think any, any of this program made sense since you were exposing an affair of Dixie's and you weren't getting fired? <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I think I think at one point we said we might have said in a promo that we had ironclad contracts. And we couldn't be fired, so I think that might have been our out. But I mean, yeah, it is ridiculous. If, I mean, you even got physical with her. So. Oh yes, CD pushed her. Yeah, uh, yeah. If this was like IBM and you accused your boss of sleeping with you, would probably be fired. But <laughs> yeah, you'd be thank, toast. Thank God it's wonderful pro wrestling. What did you Boy. guys uh, think of Dixie as a character on TV? Were you? And I'm gonna ask. I'm, I'm gonna ask both of you some of these questions. What did you uh, think of it, Frankie? Uh, you know, I thought. <laughs> Considering she did had never done this before, I didn't think she was bad. I honestly think she's better as a heel. You know, I think she was when she was doing her her Dixie Carter owner. She was she was better as the sympathetic baby face. You know, I don't I don't know if really people want to have sympathy for, her, but I thought all things considered, dude, being on television is not easy, oh, especially dude, when you've never done it, man. So Frank, you have to remember this woman has everything. Yeah, and so yeah, for man. her to get sympathy from the fans, it's going to be right. ten harder. I thought she did an incredible job of this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, see her go into that production truck and say, what the hell? Who allowed this to get on TV? I thought she did a really good job of it. And, yeah, uh, that was believable. Absolutely, yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know what? You're right, though. She's a much better heel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> The problem but, uh, is, though, I, now that we, we, a baby face. we've had a couple good owners of wrestling do a really nice job, that doesn't mean every single owner of wrestling should always be in it the ring. It sure does not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Sorry. Couldn't notice, how, I'm, notice how I'm the one getting beaten up right now. But <laughs> since the beginning of the match and CD's on the apron. Yeah, you're yeah, getting, you you're getting, yeah. you're getting the one. CD comes in and shines. Of course, yeah. Of course. Story of our tag run, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> you uh, th- this Sam uh, Slam anniversary, the show draw- draws five thousand fans, four thousand tickets sold. You said it, uh, Frankie, earlier. Arlington, Texas. Yeah. That's a pretty damn good number, though, man. It's one of the highest attended TNA shows in America. I mean, what do you what do you think? Who, who deserves the credit for that? Four guys in the ring right now. <laughs> you know, uh, you're not half. You're, you're half right, half wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were having a good run in TNA at this particular time, and uh, you know we're doing pretty good ratings on TV, uh, better than than usual. And I yeah. think that we just were filling uh, pay per view uh, arenas a lot more at this point in time than we did ever before. Yeah, like to Kurt's point, that the whole Claire Lynch thing, as silly as it was, it drew really good numbers for us that summer. Yeah, yeah. And uh, TNA That's as a company was was really firing right now. So it's a credit to the entire roster. Like Kurt was saying earlier, it's you know it's a it's a team it's a team effort, man. Yeah, I mean you got Sting; he's on the roster too. Another big draw. It's just it was great talent. And, yeah. and and a great and we're seeing one of the great matches right here. Uh, it, by the way, speaking of Sting, it's announced that Sting is going to be the first member of the TNA Hall of Fame. Uh, supposedly, with uh, this is all a shoot. Did Sting deserve to be in your guys' minds the first uh, inductee into the TNA Hall of Fame? He was the most established. He was the most popular. He was the longest running wrestler at that particular time. He was the leader. Uh, I honestly believe that Sting deserved to be the very first inductee of the mm. TNA Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, he's Sting. I mean, he's you know he's should be in any Hall of Fame. He's one of the guys like yourself, Kurt, that just synonymous with the name pro wrestling, uh, and especially at the time when TNA was going to create a Hall of Fame, uh, he was a box office marquee guy, and uh, absolutely he had my vote. This is funny. I remember AJ's leg got. This was he was yes. completely stuck here. He was complete. This was not supposed to happen. He was just completely stuck and could not get out. Uh, AJ never gets stuck either. No, I know. He's, he's probably he's freaking not, out. Yeah, he was. He's like, he's like, freak, I couldn't get my leg. He was, <laughs> yeah. Which is kind well, of scary because you, I, I, I can imagine too that it's a little bit scary because you don't want to risk getting injured or something, you know, something seriously happened, hung up like that. Oh, man. People don't realize how tight those cables are. And if you get your leg locked under one of those turnbuckles, Dude, it's 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 brutal. I never I, did it, Frankie. To be honest with you, <laughs> no, no, I have. I've been in that exact situation, and it's it's I, I, you get paranoid a little bit. Uh, re, re, uh, refresh my memory here as we're watching this match, Frankie. Did Kurt ever try one of his classic moon salts from the top rope against you whenever he fought you, or no? <laughs> he he might he might have done it in a singles match, man. He might have he might have. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we he missed them all. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, uh, I asked you about Sting in the Hall of Fame. Do you guys like the fact that TNA even started with the whole Hall of Fame concept? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, and and the, what's crazy is they don't necessarily uh, induct people that are retired. And and I like that as well. I, I'm not that you have to be retired to be in the Hall of Fame. You don't. I did in WWE. I, I got inducted in the Hall of Fame before I got retired. Uh, but um, I think it's, you know, TNA is such a young company. And I'm glad they started the Hall of Fame younger at a younger age uh, so that they could induct more athletes and make it a more historical company. Yeah, I agree. And there's guys that, you know, will never get their, you know, recognition, say, in a WWE Hall of Fame. Oh, no. They guys might that never did, get their period. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But guys that have done great work. So yeah. um, it's it's good. And now, you know that TNA has been established for a while. It's, it's cool. And it's something people look forward to wondering who's going to be the next guy. And yeah, it's, it's good, man. Speaking of, uh, this time period and everything that was going on, Christian, uh, was also there as part of the agreement with the WWE to have Ric Flair inducted into the hall of fame. What did you guys think of seeing uh, Christian again? Uh, personally, Jay is one of my best friends. So it was thrilled. I remember we went out and had dinner after this and it was great to see him. Uh, I, I always enjoy seeing Christian, uh, even though he's one of the biggest heels in the business on screen and off. Uh, so it was cool. It was a cool opportunity to see him. Me personally, I don't like him. I think he's an asshole. So. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It was a little uncomfortable seeing him in that position because he was signed with the WWE at the time and to see him there for TNA, uh, doing a promo to induct Ric Flair. It was kind of different. 
Yeah, it was weird. There was a weird type of energy backstage. It was. Yeah. Look at Kurt moving like a, look at that, like a cruiserweight, man. My God. I don't look like a cruiserweight. I was going to say, Kurt, what are, are we are we enjoying? Um, we we got a little heavy. This is yeah. after the movie, the Warrior movie. This wasn't chicken snacks. Chicken snacks weren't oh, around back then. Oh. <laughs> but dude, you're freaking throwing 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 them around. Hey, the fatter I got, the better I moved. Oh boy, <laughs> the fatter he got, the better. The further he threw me on Germans. <laughs> I remember that. I mean, it's angle slams, Germans, belly to backs. Oh, listen, these guys were great. You talk about the best feeders in the business. CD and Kaz are the absolute best. These guys will bump and feed for you all day long. They're freaking awesome. Look, look, look at Kaz. You're not even giving him a choice here, dude. You're just what? Oh my god. Yeah, but you know what? He jackknifes. That's why oh, it looks yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. Kaz is the only one that does this. Oh, look He's at this one. Halfway in the air. It's really cool. Here we go. Both of them. Oh, so look great. at the crowd. So brilliant. I love that. On that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He brought CD all the way over. I, didn't yeah, I, I, I was trying to put CD on his head. <laughs> the crowd exploded. That was so cool, yeah. man. I love it. Hey, man, there's an art to bumping and feeding and feeding a comeback. And it's getting lost a little bit these days. So I, I pride myself on it. It is trying getting to, lost. You're yeah, absolutely right. Because yeah. it is an art. If you yeah. do it right, it works and the fans respond. Amen. Here, here's the uh, the reply. God, that was so good. And the art of selling. There it is. And now, and let's not, let's not. That's dismiss, it. It's dismiss. just so, it's so yeah. cool to just to be in there with, pro, just to be in there with pros, man. It's just, it's night and day when you're in there with other just professionals. It is all four of us. Uh, you know, the, the thing is you guys put, you guys basically put this match together. I didn't. <sighs> and uh, you're all incredible at structuring matches. And not only that, but when you get in there, you guys are all pros. I mean, th this was the, my favorite tag match of my career. Oh, that's that's huge, man. That's great. It's <laughs> probably mine too. Yeah. T talk about it though. Putting this this type of match together. Do you recall it all, Kaz? As far as was there a conversation beforehand, or you're going out calling it? And the I mean, there's so many moves back to back to back. There's so much going on here. I, I can honestly tell you, probably that day, me, AJ, and CD went to the gym together. Probably talked about some stuff. Got to the uh, got to That's the. That's all they do. They're like wrestling nerds. Yeah, <laughs> they go to got, the talk wrestling. We probably yeah, probably and, and we probably got our matches. Yeah, we we probably got to the building and uh, saw Kurt and told him as some ideas and he filled in what he wanted to do and it, we, we all we all think very similarly in terms of structuring a match. So it was probably real easy. And, and Kurt said, "Just know when I touched you, you're probably getting suplexed, and that's yeah. how it'll work." I loved it. I loved it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is unbelievable action. Yeah, this it, is. I, for, it, it, I forgot it, how good this was. Tag Max doesn't get any better than this. It doesn't. <sighs> wow. I'll read a little bit here from the Observer. Uh, yeah, we'll hear a little bit what Dave says. We we do that here on the show, Kaz. Because, cool. but Meltzer loved this match. Uh, he said Kurt this and a, a, AJ's. It. He loves Kurt Angle, by the way. Oh yeah. I'm I'm gonna and Kurt loves him and I'm gonna have a shirt here on the show that says Kurt loves Dave coming. Yeah. So just heads up there. Kurt Angle and AJ Styles beat Christopher Daniels and Kazarian. I don't think we're giving away a spoiler here. This was 2012. Yeah. Uh to win the tag titles and 1427. Styles and Angle were on fire here. Everyone knows Daniels works like a glove with Styles since they've got so much experience together. But nobody ever talks about Kazarian at this level. And he, at no point in this match, was being carried or seemed not at the league with the other three. Dave putting you over here. He said, What's Styles that? did a springboard forearm off the guardrail. Then came the heat spots on Styles. Angle tagged in with a bunch of German suplexes, which we saw in that Olympic slam. The big spot was Angle's German suplexing both men at the same time. Uh, he put Daniels in the ankle lock, but Kazarian broke it up with a high kick. Daniel sets up Ang uh, Angel's wings, but Angle backdropped out and tagged Styles in, and we're seeing some of that take place now. Uh, Styles did all kinds of stuff, including a moonsault into a reverse DDT on Kazarian while doing a regular DDT on Daniel's. 
Kazarian landed the high kick on Styles, and they went back to work on him. Then came a series of moves with Daniels doing the roll of the dice on Styles, Angle doing the Olympic slam. He basically just continues to break down the match. I'm going to take it to the end. He said, in the ring, Kazarian went for his uh, Amori driver, My, um, and, and but Angle reversed it into the ankle lock. Ankle grapevine the leg, and Kazarian was struggling for the ropes before tapping out when he was just short of the ropes. Four and a quarter stars, but guys, oh, after oh, bullshit. I, listen, Meltzer now will give it five, six, seven. He, he grades different nowadays. Is that how it works now? Yeah, I guess we've noticed. Yeah, he, does. he gives us sometimes six stars, guys. And if it was in the Tokyo oh, Dome, it'd be like eight. Seven. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but this is a hell of a match, boys. Look at Kurt doing a frog splash. That was a fat splash. That was a bullfrog splash. <laughs> Thank God for that ref pull. I wasn't kicking out of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. My. Oof. For this those of you that it's better. It really does. For those of you audio only, AJ just did a a, a moonsault outside of the ring. A gainer. A gainer. Yeah. yeah. Shooting star, springboard yeah, shooting star to the floor, basically. Incredible. Hey, AJ. Man, so good. And wow. it's ama- and, and I and we talk about how good he is, but it's how good he still is having done all these high risk moves for so long. Oh yeah. Look at that counter. And he's still doing it. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Curd into the counter on the ankle lock on, on Kaz here. Has it wrapped up tight. Great Let's go fight. to the audio. Tapping. Is he gonna get the ropes? The Sarian's ankle's gonna get snapped. The titles are in jeopardy. Congratulations to the new World Tag Team Champions, AJ Styles and Kurt Angle. Holy Mike, that was that was great stuff. Great stuff. Couldn't agree with you more. That was unreal. What a spectacular World Tag Team title matchup. And it leads to this. Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. Yeah, the new World Tag Team Champions. Guys in the truck, oh, I know you got some great replay stuff for us on this one. Oh, my God, I'll tell you, man, this was something. This was just an amazing match for the World Tag Team titles. And in early goals, AJ and Kurt Angle, they, they were looking great. I mean, they had all the, all the power on their side. But then the champions, well, the then champions were able to just shut down AJ, utilize him as a sacrificial lamb, and they put some heavy steam, heavy offense on AJ, but Kurt Angle came in and was just throwing people all over the place, some textbook suplexes, that right there I'm jealous of. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I, I said I, I tipped my suplex hat to that one, but AJ stopped. He persevered in this thing, as did his partner Kurt Angle. Love that. Again, you gotta again you gotta give credit to, to Kazarian and Daniels. They put out an what? amazing effort out here. Kurt slides in, but then this what incredible move from AJ. Now what this does is AJ took himself out, but he got Daniels out of play. So it all came down to Kurt Angle and Kazarian. That's what Kurt wanted. He applies the ankle lock. He refines the leg. And Kazarian, oh, he came so close to getting to the ropes, but he had to tap. He had to tap for his ankle was going to get shattered. Ooh, Man, that baby. was something, buddy. That was something. Wow. Some tag team champs, baby, in the middle of the ring. Woo. Wow, guys, what a match. Yeah. What initial, initial thoughts after seeing that one again? Oh, I just want to say you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Man, yeah, you know, I uh, I don't make a habit of watching my matches back because I'm very, very hypercritical of my own work to this day. Too, to this day, you know, like I really, I really don't because I'll I'll pick it apart and rip myself apart and all that. Uh, but this, uh, that was a badass match, man. That's one of those matches that stands the test of time. That match could happen on a pay per view this weekend and would be 
like revered, like, uh, That's the night. yeah, yeah. Very, very proud of that. Again, it's a credit to all the guys in the ring, uh, be an absolute prof- not only professional, some of the best that have ever done this, uh, you know, impossible when you have all those players doing what we do, it's impossible to, to not have a great match. So, uh, very, 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 very proud of that one, man. Frankie, this has to be the best work at this point in your career. As you, wouldn't you say? Certainly, certainly as a tag team. Absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, coming off my last year, I'd had some really standout singles matches with Kurt and with AJ and with Christian and with a number of people in the company, but as a tag team, CD and I really just kind of getting rolling and to have this type of match that cemented us as oh, wow, they're, these guys are a team to, to look out for. And we would be a team for the next 10 years. Uh, 10 years plus. You guys would, man. You guys so, were yeah. established. Yeah. You, you guys turned into legends. You really did. Uh, that's Thanks, man. Coming from you, that means the world, dude. Seriously. <laughs> hey, guys. Eric Bischoff here. And just want to call a quick timeout. I want to tell your listeners about what I've been telling everybody at over at 83 Weeks quite a while now. About all the cool things that are happening over at adfreeshows.com. Through strength, support, and faith, one half of TNA's America's Most Wanted Chris Harris has persevered, and wrestling is still a big part of his life. And on a brand new series, The False Finish, Chris Harris tells us the story of his amazing journey in his own words. I was thinking to myself then when that came about, you know, I, it's hard going through what I went through and not think, you know, would that have happened had I not had a sober head? I mean, or, or, you know, I have, I have God looking out for me. You know, would something like that have happened in any other circumstances? Because Scott Demore, I mean, I kept in touch with him. He knew about it all. So, and he was so proud of me for doing it. So maybe that had a little piece of, of it. To, maybe that's why the opportunity was there. But um, just a lot of really great things have happened in the past uh, couple of years. And um, I'm just so thankful and I'm grateful for, for being in the place I am now. That's just a small taste of what we've got waiting for you with four levels to choose from. See for yourself why ad-free shows is the best value in wrestling today. Sign up now at adfreeshows.com. Kurt, you said this is your, what, one of your favorites of all time? Tag My matches? favorite tag match of all time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this, this was without a doubt. I, I, my second favorite is the six man tag I did with Ray Mysterio um, uh, Chris Benoit, Edge, and uh, Guerreros. Yeah, but this match is my favorite tag match. Mm. Uh, that's that's look at look I at the guy. That's match, high praise, man. Really? Yeah. Wow. This one just had like it just flowed really well, <laughs> you know. And it wasn't that long. It was only fifteen minutes. It seemed like twenty, twenty-two. Yeah, it's one of those. You we leave them wanting more. We could have gone on for five more minutes, you know, but we didn't need to. We, you know, we. We told the story we wanted to tell. Everybody played their role perfectly. Uh, I mean, you saw the crowd reaction. I mean, that's you know, it's it's that's it's not the reaction you want on every match. Yeah, every person standing, loud chanting. Yeah, it's that was it, man. But the chemistry and the work between you and Christopher Daniels, though, I feel like that tag team, you know, could have continued to just. Yeah, I mean, uh, we again, we were we've been friends forever. Uh, that, that is a plus. Them being yeah, best friends yeah. Oh, yeah. that long. Yeah. Uh, they, they had such great chemistry. Just completely synced up. All the time. All day, all, all night, they were together. Yep. Uh, and great, great chemistry as opponents. So when we got together, we had great chemistry as as partners, obviously. And with AJ, again, we all think similar. Uh, and then you throw Kurt into the mix, who also is, is brilliant about structuring matches and where to do stuff and why to do stuff again. It's the art of what we do. That's so important. That's so being missed nowadays. Kurt's one of the best ever at that. Uh, so it, again, this, this just all the stars aligned for this to be the match that it was. We well, took well, pride listen. in structuring our matches. Yeah. In TNA, we all took pride in structuring. Oh yeah. We could, it, it was a, it was a must. Everybody Sh- did it. Yeah. Sure. It was a, well, as we uh, we wrap up this one, I got to ask Frankie, favorite, do you have a favorite Kurt Angle memory or story 
uh, because this is the Kurt Angle show that you want to share with our audience today. Anything that uh, comes to Make mind? Make sure when... it's um, acceptable. Uh, yeah. No, it's uh, hey, uh, it's uh, all, all anything goes on this show, man. <laughs> no, if, I, if I'm going to tell my favorite, we're going to have to have to save that for the Patreon members. Be a <laughs> no, let it go, something. let it rip, let it rip. <laughs> uh, again, man, uh, you know, it, it'd be hard to pinpoint one. Um, we had a lot of, you know, this match after this match happened, we did the same match, not the same match, but we did this match on the road for house shows for a couple of weeks, maybe even a few we months traveled and, around doing it. Yeah. You know? I, I had it's so much fun. We did different stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We would do, you know, we mix it up. Sometimes it'd be Ken Anderson and Kurt. Sometimes we'd do six mans. You'd throw Bobby Root in there with us, uh, you know, Austin Aries. Uh, I had so much fun working with Kurt on just, uh, we had so much fun on the road doing house shows and, and TVs and, and really getting to know him and become friends with him. And uh, God, I'm trying, I don't know if there was a particular story, Matt. I remember one, this is just stupid. I remember, uh, Kurt, I don't know if you remember this, but for a while at house shows, they were um, having us do a battle royal to open the house show. <laughs> and all of us were like, ugh. So it's like, we kind of, you know, we kind of try to have fun out there. And I remember one time I grabbed, uh, we were in the battle royal, and I grabbed Rob Van Dam, who was another baby face, and I turned to Kurt and I go, "Kurt," and Kurt just looked at me like, "No," and he just brought and he just, he just moved Rob, and he just drilled me with this with this just cinder block, and I was like, "Oh God!" Like, <laughs> step you, go, oh yeah, oh yeah, complete accent, but I was like, "Oh God!" He's like, he wanted to be <laughs> like he wanted to be my buddy, and I was like, "Yeah, no. yeah like yeah, let, let's team up." And he just he gave me this look, which popped me a little bit. And he just threw Rob out of the way. He just drilled me. I was like, "All right." It wasn't an accident, work. Cass. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't an accident. Oh, That's yeah, the yeah. asshole, it's Kurt Angle. <laughs> no, Kurt, <laughs> Kurt, <laughs> Kurt's a pro's pro. No man, I was again, like, again. I, I'll say this: I remember when they announced uh, when they announced that Kurt was coming into the company. Yes, tell and us they about played, that. They played that vignette. Uh, you know. Uh, I remember standing in gorilla position right next to AJ and none of us knew. And we were watching and uh, watching the monitor and that came up and me and AJ literally hugged. We're like, dude, this is huge. <laughs> like, like Kurt's coming to friggin' TNA. This is going to be big, man. Uh, you know, not knowing him, you know, only meeting him at like WWF dark matches and stuff. But, uh, but then him getting there and him get, and I always say this during that era, we had a lot of veterans and established guys come in these next gentlemen are the guys that I think helped bring TNA up to a level that it hadn't seen before. And that's Kurt Angle, the Dudley boys and Christian. I think those gentlemen did so much above and beyond what they were asked of in terms of helping the company grow, bringing the young guys up, uh, elevating us just by being in the ring with us. Uh, so it was, it was um, huge for me uh, personally and big for the company. You know what? I cared so much about this company. I took care of it as much as I possibly could. I had more fun in TNA than I ever did in WWE. Yeah. This was a special group of guys, and I never wanted it to end. I would have never left TNA if the money didn't run out, but the yeah. money ran out. So I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I, I hear you, man. And there was that time frame where, you know, not only was it a special group of, of men and women, but we were firing on all cylinders there was a time that our show was light years above anything else that was on at that point it was better it was than a, a lot of stuff that's on now yeah it was a great certainly. wrestling show yeah yep frankie i just got excited as i heard metallica one as your ringtone in the background we talked <laughs> oh, yeah. a little bit a little bit before our, our love of metallica but hey man before we let you get out of here and or wrap up at least the uh, interview portion of this Anything that you want to put out there in terms of just uh, promote or, or, or share with our, our listeners, and, and uh, we want to give you that time. Uh, well, we're talking wrestling. Uh, if you're a Laps fan or if you haven't checked out Impact in a while, really give it a chance, man. Uh, talk about being the best kept secret in wrestling. Our shows are great. Our storylines make sense. The end reaction is is top notch. Uh, check it out on Access TV or on the app wherever you can. Uh, really, a lot of good things happening. Uh, you know, if you're a cigar guy, check out American rebel cigars. Those are, uh, you know, that's Cody and I, we still got that rolling. Um, and just, uh, you know, just keep following along. Uh, thanks for following me on this journey, man. Like I said, I just celebrated 25 years in the business, 20 years since my TNA debut. Uh, it's, I can't believe 
I can't believe it's been that long uh, because I'm still having so much fun and I'm enjoying this more than ever. And going back and watching stuff like this, just, you know, it makes, it makes me, you know, sometimes you, you ask, why are we doing this? And I go back and look and wow, I, you know, I was part of something special and I'm still part of something special. And it's, uh, that's not lost to me anymore, you know? Mm. Well, man, listen, we can't say enough about you joining us this week. This has been awesome. Hasn't it, Kurt? Yeah. Yeah. Kaz, thank you so much for coming on our show. Uh, you're one of my favorite episodes so far. So I just want to thank you for coming on. Yeah. And, and, and I got to say, man, listen, we, we talk about it every week, but if you want to check out more of Kurt's past top impact moments, you can do that impactwrestling.com forward slash packages and sign up with code Kurt K U R T again, impactwrestling.com forward slash packages. Not only are you going to see a lot of great matches with Kurt, but you're going to see a lot of great matches with Kaz as well. So, uh, check it out, sign up. And I know, uh, the folks over at impact will be thrilled. We would be thrilled for you to do that as well. Well, listen, Kaz, if you want to take off, you're more than welcome to Kurt. And I have a few things we got to do as That's far as awesome. no, because all we're going to do is advertise a bunch of stuff. <laughs> This is where you bury me as soon as I leave. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I got to go pick up my son from school. But, dude, this was cool. Paul, thanks, dude. Kurt, so yeah, good to man. see you, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Pleasure you was all ours, man. Thank you so much for doing yeah. that. You were a great guest, and we we loved having I'll you on. I'll see you soon, guys. For sure. Yeah, our paths will cross soon. God all bless right. you guys. Sounds good. Take care, brother. brother. Take it so, easy, boys. Yep. Hey, uh, Kurt, man, how fun was that, dude? That was a blast, man. I love that kid. Uh, I had so much respect for him. Thing is, when he start when I started in TNA, he wasn't a big name. He was he was a really talented young kid. He looked like um, who's the actor that they compare him to? Uh, Stallone? No, <laughs> no, Banderas. Antonio. Oh, Antonio Banderas. Banderas. He did look like him a lot when he had the same hair. He he used to have longer hair, a little curly, and um, so uh, I I always liked the kid, and, and and they thought you know this kid with this great look if he you know, if, if he ends up, you know, doing, you know, getting popular, uh, he's going to be a big name in wrestling. And I, I always thought he was going to be a big name and he ended up being a big name. So I, I'm really proud of him. And, uh, I think he's done a great job, it's, especially when he first started out, he was so young and impressionable and seeing him, uh, go leaps and bounds all the way up until now is incredible. Man, it's so good. And uh, again, thanks to Derek for Sabato, our research guy, was Thank able you, to co- coordinate that uh, while we did this topic. Guys, listen, if your business targets 25 to 54-year-old men, no better place than to advertise right here on The Kurt Angle Show. You've heard us do ads for some of the same companies for years, and that's because it works. We have a super targeted audience and uh, very little waste. So go to advertisewithangle.com right now. Find out more about how you can advertise on The Kurt Angle Show, and Kurt and I would love to talk about your product. Kurt, speaking of products, before we get down to talk about some other things, can you talk to us about your protein, brother, your protein? Yes, yes. I have American Dream Cookies and Cream Protein. You can go to my Instagram page at The Real Kurt Angle. You can tap the link there. You can buy the commemorative box set. It's a collector's edition. There's a bunch of Kurt Angle merchandise with the protein. Or you can you can go down a little further and just buy the protein alone. It's the best tasting protein on the market. It's incredible. Or if you want to order it on the website, go to projectonenutrition.com. And at the beginning of July, it's going to be in every GNC in the country. I can't and eventually wait. worldwide in every GNC, probably by the mid-August. So um, the, it's it's incredible. You're going to love the flavor. It's cookies and cream right up my alley. Cookies and milk, that's what I love. And that's why I did it. And it's the best tasting protein on the market. Worldwide in GNC, Kurt Angle. How cool is I that, got man? A distribution. <laughs> that is that is fantastic. So happy for you. Guys, also, uh, we talk about it often here, but ad free shows, that's where it's at. If you are looking to ch- test out and see what it's all about, you can do that for a week totally free. Just sign up. After that, just nine dollars a month at the uh the beginner's level there. Early ad free, more than a dozen podcasts. Plus, uh, if you sign up, you can check out bonus content with Kurt and I covering all kinds of great topics, having a lot of fun over there. So check it out. Uh, Kurt mentioned his social media on Instagram. Uh, you can also follow the show at the angle pod, whether it's on uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, also YouTube. 
Uh, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications at youtube.com forward slash the angle pod. Uh, you could have watched along as TNA has blessed us with no filters on the wrestling and been able to watch that entire match with Kurt, myself, and Kaz. And we had a, a blast doing that. Uh, Kurt, talk to us about physically fit and those chicken snacks. Physically fit chicken snacks. We got chicken protein and organic plant protein. We also have a new whey, a whey protein. Uh, all all eleven flavors. They're all delicious. You're gonna absolutely love them. The whey protein actually tastes better than the chicken and the uh, plant protein. But we have all three right now. Go to physicallyfit.com to order yours. You could use the code AnglePod20 and get, uh, or is it just AnglePod, Paul? It's AnglePod, and then they get twenty percent off. You yeah. get twenty percent off. So yeah. go to physicallyfit.com to order yours. You're gonna absolutely love them. They're high protein, low carbohydrate. They're incredible for your health. There you go. And finally, KurtAnglebrand.com for the Kurt Angle lover in your life. And we all know it's you. It's you listening to this. So check it out, KurtAnglebrand.com. You're going to get birthday cards, cowboy hats, milk cartons, cameo videos. Uh, Kurt will do whatever you want on those cameo videos. Autograph photos, T-shirts. I have the whole bottle of wax. Uh, ordered on my website. He literally sells a ball of wax. Uh, so there you go, the whole ball. I have ball of waxes too. <laughs> Oh, wax. <laughs> oh, wow. Guys, listen, you can check it out, KurtAnglebrand.com, and uh, he's got a little something for everyone over there. The cameo videos are the best. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. So check it out, KurtAnglebrand.com. Kurt, this was a fun time this week, man. It was. I was. We had a blast. We did two episodes, and I absolutely love both of them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I so, let the cat out of the bag, didn't it's I? It's all good, man. Sometimes we got to do that. Summer's crazy. You're traveling. I'm traveling. Everyone's traveling. It's summer vacation. And uh, we'll be back next week with that amazing Vengeance 2005. On behalf of your Olympic hero, Kurt Angle, this is Paul Bromwell. And we'll see you right back here next week on The Kurt Angle Show. Hi, this is Dr. Tom Pritchard, head coach at JPWA, the Jacobs Pritchard Wrestling Academy. And if you want to save money, go to SaveWithConrad.com. Well, I kept watching the podcast and I kept seeing the commercials. You can't help but see the commercials during the podcast. And I figured, Conrad, who else better? So we gave it a shot and found out we were right. We were looking to refinance our mortgage. Everybody has a lot of bills these days, and we thought we could probably do better with the percentage rate. Everybody was great to work with. It was a matter of just filling in the right numbers uh, in the right place, and everybody told us how to do that and what we needed. And within the next three weeks, we, we were refinanced. We are saving now over $100 a month, so that's probably over a 25-year span uh, $25,000, which adds up, was so simple and they made me feel uh, a lot less nervous and more comfortable when I'm talking to someone because I don't always understand financial aspects of anything, but it was great working with the team, uh, everyone from uh, top to bottom, start to finish. If we had questions, no matter how complicated, everyone made sure to explain it to its fullest, to our satisfaction, to where we understood, my wife and I understood the process, understood where we needed to start and where we were gonna end up. 